Welcome. Today we would start with NCERT Class 6, the ninth chapter that talks about the living organisms and their surroundings. Now, before we start with the, this chapter, let's have a brief recap of what we have studied in the last two chapters. So, in the last two chapters, we have discussed about living organisms and non-living organisms. Under living organisms, we say living organisms are those which are biotic. And the characteristics of living organisms, we would understand in a while. In brief, we can say they uh, do movement, they respond to stimuli, they can uh, have the process of uh, breathing or respiration and growth is associated with living organisms. However, when we talk about non-living organism, we say those constitute the abiotic world and it includes air, water, temperature, rainfall. But all these abiotic factors assist the biotic factors for the growth. The second important uh, terms for this chapter that we would understand are firstly the idea of habitat and the next is adaptation. When we say Habitat, it's basically a living place or a dwelling place of any organism and adaptation, adaptation is basically uh, considering oneself or modifying the traits of oneself to adjust to the living environment. So, for different areas, you have different kind of adaptations that are seen. For example, in a cold area, you would have uh, conical trees. The basic reason for having a conical trees is very simple. You would have all the snow that would run down and the plant would not, not be affected because of the snow. The second important modification in a desert area is what we say or hear about as cactus as a plant with thorns. Now that's a general perspective about a cactus plant when we study. But here we have a cactus plant which has flowers on it. So we'll talk about cactus or the desert vegetation in a while. The next important adaptation is in the uh, aquatic region where you can see fishes which have streamlined body. In the last class we have talked about fishes and their streamlined body. We'll be discussing more about those in a while. So all these are different adaptation, adaptations that could be seen in a terrestrial organism or a aquatic surrounding. So for a terrestrial setting, we have, let's say, the mountain region, the desert region. For the aquatic, we have kind of streamlined bodies, those are seen. Then we have the Caucasian trees that are seen along the coast. So all those are various adaptations that we see in. Now coming on to some of the general adaptations that we would talk about. So we'll start with the very first that is the desert. Now in the desert itself we'll start with the first that is cactus. Now as we said in cactus you have stem that is uh, modified and it's a kind of thick structure that you could see here. The next is leaves. Leaves are modified into spines. The reason for the modification of leaves into spines is very simple because when you have leaves that are modified into spines, the water that is being lost through transpiration is reduced. So the process of evaporation <coughs> or transpiration and the water loss is reduced when you have spines because the surface area gets reduced. However, you might say in this plant, which is Euphorbia milli, you would have leathery leaves that are seen. Now again, when we see the leaves are leathery, that means the leaves have a kind of waxy surface or a leathery surface that prevents the water, uh, trans uh, the evaporation of water at the same rate. And similarly, the flowers that you would have here are much more leathery and waxy in nature. So all these adapt adaptations in the desert area help a plant to survive in an arid condition. These plants which survive in an arid condition are also known as succulents. So succulents are those plants which have thick stems and they can survive in arid and semi-arid conditions. So those are known as succulents. The next important modification that we would talk about today is the camels. Now under camel, we would understand a very basic uh, phenomena with the help of just this diagram. First of all, we have different type of camels that you see. This is a kind of single humped camel and then you have a double humped camel that we have here. 
so there are various camels that could be seen or the various species of camels that are seen now the first very interesting thing about the hump hump stores fat and not water so that's one of the major confusions that students have so hump is useful for storage of fat and not water then you have long legs what's the benefit of having long legs because you would have a kind of dusty environment below and a lot of sand below these long legs would have a kind of main body or the eyes or the face that would be uh, resistant to the lower dust that would be blowing in then again the eyes have long eyelashes that's again meant to prevent uh, sand going into the eyes similarly you have a leathery mouth the purpose of leathery mouth is to protect itself from the spines that are present on the various trees again you have the knee caps that are again leathery that's the that's the basic purpose for kneeling down so those are the modifications that are seen on the body in the body of camel in the desert area now <coughs> sorry <coughs> we have talked about camels the other modifications that you see uh, in a desert atmosphere is for the rats so rats burrow the holes and they live in the holes these burrowing of the holes provide a kind of cold environment and uh, the survival becomes much easier for these animals like rats snakes and so on the next is in the aquatic area you have fishes in the last class we have specifically focused on the body structure of a fish so when we talk about body structure of the fish we said since childhood you would have been drawing fish but a good question comes up why on both the ends of the fishes you have a kind of smaller body that is drawn as compared to the center body the reason is to provide it a kind of streamlined shape which assists the process of swimming then you have fins on either ends these fins help in balancing the body the tail fin provides a kind of direction for uh, movement then you have scales on the body that prevents it or protects the body uh, against the water flow that could be seen there so these are some of the modifications that are seen on the body of a fish so we have a diagram of the fish to help you better understand this so we already talked about how these features affect different uh, regions already we have talked about the desert environment we have talked about the cactus and the various vegetation that could be seen in the desert atmosphere the th the stem as we said is covered with a waxy layer and here you have another diagram for cactus now this is what you have a common picture of when you hear about cactus and this is a kind of uh, succulent that we see now what happens here cactus usually have long deep roots the idea is to take water from uh, deep uh, deep inside the earth and that water could be taken for uh, longer durations despite you have a kind of arid atmosphere for a prolonged period again as we said the uh, stem is waxy because of which you would have less loss of water in the form of transpiration or evaporation mountain areas are very very important to understand now in mountain areas again you have adaptations that are seen for the trees as we said you would have conical trees so that the snow run off then the leaves are very thin and spiky in order to move along with the wind direction or they are not damaged because of the heavy wind flow or a high wind flow that occurs in a higher altitude regions the next important is the animals animals usually specifically if we talk about in the polar areas are adapted to the surroundings so they are white in color they can camouflage well with the snow which is seen in the surrounding they have huge body uh, a kind of body with huge fur or thick layer of fur so as to protect them from the cold waves that are seen in those regions again the fit uh, the feet has a kind of a good layer of fur that helps it to protect from the cold that it can catch from the ground surface 
So those are some of the modifications that we have seen. Again, one very important modification is for the mountain goats. Mountain goats are known for their excellent speed to run uh, on a mountain or an altitude. So they have very strong hooves that are seen. So this is an example of a conifer tree or a kind of conical tree that is seen in high altitudes. Then we come on to grasslands. Under grasslands, we talk about two specific animals. One is lion, the other is deer. So lion basically is a predator and it hunts for its prey. Now the prey for the lion would be deer. The eye structure for the two would be very different. Lion would have a kind of eyes towards the center so as it can focus very well on the prey. However, the prey that is deer would have the eyes that would be towards the side so that it can have a broader vision to understand whether it has a kind of uh, any attack could be done on the deer itself and in that case it can run quickly. Again deer would have bigger ears so as to have good sound and even a small sound would alert the deer to run away. So those are kind of modifications that are seen in the grassland animals. Deer has strong teeth to chew the hard plants and it can also uh, have a very good sensation of an uh, incoming predator that's for example a lion by its big, tree, uh, big ears that are seen and again the modifications for the eyes that are seen so that it can have a broader vision as compared to lion. So lion need to have much focused vision in a dryland atmosphere. So those are the modifications that could be seen in the grassland regions. Aquatic regions, we have already talked about how fishes need to have a kind of streamlined body. But besides fishes, let's talk about octopus squids. So these are seen in very deep areas. So when they are seen in very deep areas, they do not have a streamlined body. But when it is required to swim in water, they convert their body or they basically move their body in a kind of streamlined fashion and they also use gills for the purpose of respiration. So most of the aquatic animals which are basically uh, fishes as you will see in the higher classes in your animal kingdom, you would understand that gills is a prerequisite for respiration. However, dolphins, whales which are classified under mammals have lungs for respiration. So what happens is they come onto the surface of the uh, water, they use their lungs from the nostril you have the water, uh, the exchange of air that takes place and again they can stay deep inside the water for very long duration despite coming onto the surface of the water. So those are the kind of adaptations that are seen for the dolphins and the fishes. Now coming on to the ponds and the lakes. In the ponds and the lakes, you would see uh, plants growing, for example, lotus. You would have hollow stem that is seen. Now, hollow stem helps to keep it over to the surface and it basically makes the plant weight light. Most of the leaves and the flowers are seen floating on the surface. Some of the plants are even submerged. Those plants which are submerged have to fight or stand against a uh, flow of water and therefore they have thin and spiky leaves that are seen for the uh, submerged plants. Then many of the roots are reduced in the aquatic plants. So you have a very classic classification for the plants or the aquatic ecosystem that is seen which is planktons, nectons and benth benthos. Benthos are those which dwell in the lowermost layer. Nectons are those organisms which swim in the open waters independent of the direction of the current and planktons are small plants that are seen on the top of the water surface. Now as we said uh, when we talk about living organisms there are some basic prerequisites for a living organism. So living organisms must have food to survive. It requires food as a source of energy to survive. Then Growth is again a prerequisite, so a young one grows into an adult, it respires, uh, the process of respiration takes place where they take in oxygen and exhale out carbon dioxide. Different organisms breathe through different mechanisms, fishes use gills, mammals use lungs to breathe, earthworm use the skin to breathe and so on. Now the amount of oxygen released 
by the process of photosynthesis is used by other organisms for the purpose of breathing the next is stimulus uh, response to a stimuli so touch me not is one of the major plants where you can have a very good demonstration of a response to a stimuli similarly for animals it's very simple they might run off in fear if you have a needle that strikes into your hand you might repel your hand so those are simple responses to a stimuli that are seen only for living organisms and not for non living organisms excretion uh, getting rid of the waste then you have reproduction bringing up new ones so it could be by uh, production by method of pollination or seed dispersal or uh, as young ones or by egg then you have movement so animals move but plant don't move but they definitely respond to stimuli and finally all living organisms die so those are some of the basic summary of the basic characteristics of a living organism so with this we cover the ninth chapter of science that talks about the basic living organisms and their modifications to meet or to adapt to the surrounding atmosphere we'll be continuing with more science lectures for class 6 and upper classes in the uh, coming sections so stay tuned do subscribe to the channel have a very good day ahead